Hi, Elliot here from Borover Trofitters, and today I'm going to tie my Admiral Akbar for you. First, a bit of backstory. We were out fishing in Aylmer Lake Lodge this summer for giant lake trout. Chris, his son, and I, and we were working some shoals, not getting many fish. So Chris decides to tie on the Admiral, and bam. The fish seem to be really turned on by the articulated movement, and white and pink have always been a great color. Chris hands the rig to his 14-year-old son, and not 30 seconds later, he's into a 40-plus pounder. So, seven fish later between 35 and 48 pounds, we knew we were onto a very effective pattern with the Akbar. So let's show you how to tie this deadly pattern for yourself. All right, because this is a two-hook fly, we're going to start with the rear hook, this case being a two-aught A-Rex Predator. Uh, we've started with a base of pink flat wax nylon, and we're just going to wrap a white rabbit zonker on here. I want that tail to be as long as the shank of the hook at any rate, and then a few wraps behind the hide of the, of the, the rabbit here just to try and prevent it from fouling, and then we're going to wrap forward again. All right, so once we've secured our rabbit strip, we're going to tie in a two-inch translucy fly brush in steelhead gray. And I really want to always make sure I tie in my materials very well and what we're going to do is palmer this brush on. This is going to add some body to this portion of the fly and it's also going to act as a prop for the materials we're going to attach in front of it. So we want to wind that to about oh I'd say two-thirds of the way up, three-quarters of the way up to the eye of the hook. And we're just going to cut that off, make sure uh, that everything's slicked back, and then we're going to tie in a white marabou blood quill. I'm going to tie it in at the tip here. I like to fold that tip back and just adds a little bit more body. Now I'm going to palmer this feather and make sure I keep all of those fibers back. I don't want to wrap over them. I want to have all those fibers flowing back to add to the movement of the fly. Now most of the materials for this fly are chosen to give a lot of movement in the water, but you know, we use these brushes as well to add, you know, silhouette to the fly because it needs to be a pretty substantial silhouette to entice these large fish to eat it. So once we palmered our white marabou uh, blood quill on here, we're going to slick that back. We might just tie it back a little bit because we want to leave space for a dubbing loop. And uh, again, we don't want to crowd the eye of the hook because we're going to have to attach this to the uh, front portion of the fly as well. And we don't want to crowd it because that allows for the movement that we're going to ultimately be looking for in this fly. So we'll get our dubbing loop sorted here. I'm not using any uh, dubbing wax for this. Basically, I'm just going to cut a nice little bit of fuchsia arctic fox here. Um, and I'm not terribly concerned about taking the underfur out to begin with. I'll just comb it out once I've got my dubbing loop spun up. So when I do my dubbing loops, I like to get my material you know, evenly spaced throughout the loop, but one thing I like to do, and it's pretty important to keep the bulk of the loop down itself, is to have all the hairs pointing in the same direction, first of all, but I don't want too much of the base of the fur sticking outside of the dubbing loop. So I'll try to tease it so that there's very, very little bit of the butt end sticking out of that dubbing loop. That way it spins up a lot cleaner, and it's a lot easier to palmer on, a little less bulky. So once I've spun this dubbing loop up, I'm really going to comb it out with my dubbing brush here. What I want to do is reduce a bit of the bulk and just make sure that it's sticking out nicely all the way around from the, from the dubbing loop itself. And again, this is to cut down on the amount of bulk because we don't want to crowd the eye of the hook. Now, once I start palmering this dubbing loop on, you're going to notice how the, uh, the pink box, it blends in very nicely with the uh, marabou feather itself and again this is just really going to add to the movement of this fly once it's in the water it really flows very very nicely. So as I palmer this dubbing loop on here it's important again not to crowd the front of the the fly or the eye, eye of the hook but you know I always put a little bit more material in my dubbing loop uh, because that way it's easier to cut off excess than it is to add at the end. Now once we finish the palmering this on we're going to comb it out, really see how it blends nicely with the marabou, and then just to finish it off, I'm going to add a couple of nice whip finishes here. It's flat wax nylon, so I can use a lot of tension and really tighten down on those whip finishes. Okay, so we have our lead hook in the vise this time. 
Uh, this case is an A-Rex 4 Aberdeen Predator and I've laid down a base of Kevlar thread. Now, whenever I'm doing articulated flies or intruders or any of that type of stuff, I like to use Kevlar thread because it's very strong and it lays down flat. Uh, you could use the flat wax nylon if you so choose, but I just make a habit out of using uh, this particular thread. So, what I'm doing is I'm putting a 65 pound fire line braid through the eye of the trailer hook that we just dressed and I'm going to just pull that tight and this is how I'm going to attach it to the front hook and again I always use Kevlar thread for this but once I get this braid seated nicely on the eye of the trailer hook then we're going to lay it down <clears throat> on top of the front hook I'm going to use a, a bit of junction tubing most people default to using beads for their articulated flies, but I just find this cheaper and easier. And I'm not looking to have a large articulation gap. I just want it to be simple and have decent movement in the water. Uh, and that's why I move away from the beads, basically. So I'm going to, now with my Kevlar thread, wrap this forward a fair ways up the shank of the hook. Uh, I want to only wrap forward about uh, two third, three quarters of the way uh, because we need room for the eyes. And then I'm going to bend that fire line back and wrap all the way back over top of it. And you know, this really locks it in place. You will not have to worry about this slipping at all. Some people put it through the eye of the hook. I find that just crowds it. Um, so this way you could basically tow your truck with it. Whip finish and we're all set to start dressing the, the, f the front hook. Now, um, whereas we used pink flat wax nylon on the rear portion of this fly, uh, for the front portion we're going to use white flat wax nylon because we're, you know, I choose the color of the thread based on how I want to finish the fly. Um, now I've got, and this is where the uh, Admiral Akbar moniker comes into play for the fly here, I've got uh, heavy extra large bead chain eyes but instead of just two eyes I cut it double wide so you have two per side. And I'm just going to really figure eight uh, with my thread and make sure I lock those eyes in very well right up against uh, the fire line where I locked it down with the Kevlar thread. So now to begin dressing the forward portion of this fly I'm going to go back to the Translucy fly brush the two inch uh, steel head gray and I'm going to tie that in again. I'm going to wrap this forward not as much as I did on, on the rear portion of the fly, but I'm still going to get a few wraps in nonetheless. Now really secure that down because you don't want these materials coming loose on you when these large fish start to chew on them. But I'm just going to palmer this brush forward a little bit here. And again, this adds volume to the fly, but what it does is it makes a prop for the materials that we're going to attach in front of it adds to the silhouette of the fly overall. I'm just going to cut that off. Okay, so this next material I'm going to tie in here. This is a bait fish emulator or shimmer fringe, whatever you want to call it, but it's long flash fibers that really add a lot of movement and flow to this fly, but also capture a lot of light and help the fish see it, especially when you're down at depth. This is just more of a pearlescent type color. Uh, we're sticking with a bit of a bait fish theme here anyways. But I'm only going to wrap basically one whole wrap around here and then I'm going to secure it again with my thread and cut it off. You don't need much of this, it's really just for flash. Now we're going to tie in some pearl cactus chenille and you can use medium or large, whatever your preference. But basically this is going to add a bit of body and it's a bit of a gap in the body overall. Uh, the materials on either side of this are really going to give the silhouette and, and the, the look of bulk to it. As you'll notice, I'm uh, wrapping this cactus chenille you know, over itself a couple of times. You know, if I was using large, I might not have to do that, but in this case I am using the medium so I can add a little bit more material. Next, we're going to take a uh, pink, you know, it's, I like to use that kind of Bazooka Joe pink uh, color for this fly and for most of my flies in which I use pink marabou at any rate, but we like that softer, more washed out hue of pink. Now again, like I did on the rear, I'm going to tie in the tip and then I'm just going to center that on the dorsal side of this fly 
and fold it back to just give a little bit more body again <clears throat> before I start palmering this feather forward. Now I'm going to grab my hackle pliers here and I'm just going to keep palmering this, making sure all of those fibers are towards the rear of the fly. Again, that just adds to the flow and movement of the bug overall. Okay, so once I've palmered that feather on, just behind the bead chain eyes, now we're going to secure that, make sure we really tighten it down, trim off our excess there. And uh, now what we're going to do is add a little bit more flash here. Next, I'm going to tie in some uh, flashaboo pearl. This is some of the more narrow flashaboo that you'll find on the shelves. Uh, what I like to do is tie it in on the dorsal side of the fly and splay it slightly so you almost get this kind of delta uh, profile on it a little bit per side but still on the dorsal portion of the fly. And then once we have that tied in, next we're going to add our, well, our ticklers as I like to call them, but these are saddle hackles and uh, again this is a grizzly pink. I like to add a couple per side and there's no need to use your really nice ones. These ones have split ends. Um, this flies like these are a good way to use up some of the less desirable fly, uh, feathers on your saddles. So once we get these, you know, basically what we want for length is to the end of the rabbit strip. If, you, if it were to be swimming in the water, then the tips of these saddle feathers would be about as long as that rabbit strip on the back end. So we want them seated so that they're, you know, concave side in and we're going to fold that down and really make sure we lash those down. We don't want them slipping. We don't want them going anywhere on us. So finally, I'm going to stretch this uh, flat wax nylon on, out and I'm going to secure a dubbing loop just behind the bead chain eyes. Again, you know, make your dubbing loops longer than you think you're going to need them so you can add a fair bit of material because when you're finishing this fly off, you're basically going to be figure eighting this, this dubbing loop around these you know, extra large bead chain eyes. And again, it's easier to just cut a little extra material off at the end than have to start all over. So like we did on the rear portion of the fly, we're gonna take some Arctic Fox here. And uh, in this case, we're gonna do white. Um, notice on the rear, I used pink Arctic Fox to finish that uh, portion of the fly, so I used pink flat wax nylon. We're going to finish the fly with white Arctic Fox here, so I've, that's the reason why I've chosen white flat wax nylon. So the same as we did before, we're going to space our material out all along the length of this dubbing loop. As we did on the rear, we're going to make sure that we don't have too much of the butt end of these fibers sticking through the dubbing loop because, again, when we spin it up, we don't want too much bulk. It always spins up much easier when you do that. And now we're going to go ahead and use our dubbing comb and comb out a lot of that under fur and a lot of the bulk out of it. We really just want those nice long uh, hairs in the dubbing loop. So I'm going to do a few wraps behind the bead chain eyes here. And then when I get up to them, I'm going to do a figure eight around the eyes. Always careful to pull all of those fibers back so you don't have uh, too much sticking up. So when I first tied this pattern, I actually had a large pike in mind. Um, here in southern Alberta, we get to do a lot of really great pike fishing in the spring. And so, you know, that's why I originally came up with this pattern. But of course, it was in my, my box when we went up north to fish for lake trout. And uh, I was really glad that Chris decided to fish it because it turns out it works extremely well. But this fly will do it for you no matter what. As long as you're fishing for large predatory fish, it's got a nice really nice movement in the water it's got a nice silhouette and it is you know one of those large meals that those big predatory fish have a hard time uh, saying no to well now that it's winter here in alberta we'll be spending a lot more time at the tying bench so make sure to subscribe so you don't miss our upcoming videos thanks again for joining us and we'll see you soon